There are many versions of eggplant parmesan, and I've happily eaten my fair share. But today, Brian has a new one to show us. You know, I keep on running into fantastic Italian restaurants in the most unlikely places. Oh, really? It's your, it's your skill? It's my skill. It's, uh, I didn't know I had it until it started happening over and over. I was in Westlake, Ohio, which is a few minutes outside of downtown Cleveland, and I ended up at a little place called La Campagna. It's a strip mall Italian restaurant with no sign, and as the owner, <laughs> Carmela Fragassi, says, if you want to find me, you'll find me. <laughs> but I was told to go there to try specifically the eggplant parmesan. Okay. It was, I gotta tell you, one of the best I've ever had, and I had to rush back to the kitchen, cut my trip short, and came back and started working <laughs> on this recipe. That's pretty high praise coming from you. It was fantastic. It all begins with a simple marinara. So I have two tablespoons of butter melting over medium low heat. I had a quarter cup of finely minced onion, three garlic cloves, two minced anchovy fillets. I know a lot of people kind of shy away from anchovies, but they add a lot of depth to the sauce. Umami is what they add. Mm -hmm. Three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt, a quarter teaspoon of pepper flakes, one quarter teaspoon of dried oregano. We're just gonna combine that in this melted butter. I'm gonna cook it until the onions just slightly soften, which takes about three minutes. So the onions have been cooking now for about three minutes, and you can smell how fragrant that is. We're gonna add to that one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes and one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes in their juice. We like the texture that the diced tomatoes added, and we like the body that the crushed tomatoes gave us. Give that a stir to combine, and we're gonna work in a half teaspoon of sugar as well. So we're gonna bring this to a simmer, reduce the heat to medium low, and let it cook until it's slightly thickened, and that takes about 10 minutes. Our sauce has been simmering now for about 10 minutes. Mm. You can see it's thickened up nicely. And it smells delicious. Delicious, huh? All right, so we shut the heat off there. We're going to add one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Mm and then a quarter cup of chopped fresh basil. With our basil, we're not gonna beat it to death here. We're gonna give it a nice, easy chop. We don't need to pulverize it or chop it so finely that we can't recognize it. And that's about a quarter cup. I'm gonna stir that in there. It's really, again, just to enhance the eggplant. I like it. Okay, so now that that's all stirred in, we're gonna set this aside and turn our attention to the eggplant. The thing that separates Carmela's eggplant parmesan from everybody else's is how she treats the eggplant. We have three 10 ounce eggplant here. Yeah, they're on the small side. Yes, so you wanna use something between 10 and 16 ounces, okay? Any bigger than that, we're not gonna be able to fit it all in our baking dish. Okay. What she does is she slices them paper thin, lengthwise. Okay, so we're ah. gonna start off by trimming up two of those eggplants because whether we need two or three really depends on me and how, <laughs> how perfectly I could slice or not the eggplant. So we're gonna begin by taking off one small edge there so we have a flat surface. And then we're going for a quarter inch slicing lengthwise. We'll measure the first slice and Perfect. then we use that as our model throughout the rest of the process. No shame in pulling a ruler out as you cook. That's right. We're looking for 20 slices of eggplant total. Now if you have a mandolin, that works especially well with some of these smaller eggplant. Mm -hmm. But one thing we could do is we could lay the eggplant on its side, holding the eggplant in place with the palm of your hand so in case there's a slip, the knife only bounces off your palm. You know, and don't push it too far. This is not gonna really yield too much of an eggplant slice for us, so we could just throw that in the scrap pile and we'll continue cutting with our next piece of eggplant. So another little trick you could do for slicing eggplant, because I don't know if you noticed, they're <laughs> kind of round and they have a tendency to roll around on the cutting board. I noticed that. <laughs> You can cut a thin slice off of one side and use that as a base. So we'll continue cutting this eggplant and it looks like I'll dip into the third one until we get our perfect 20 slices and then we'll come back and start frying. Carmela's breading technique for her eggplant is different than most other recipes I've seen out there. What she does is she takes this very thinly sliced eggplant, she dredges it in flour, dips it in egg, and from the egg it goes right into hot extra virgin olive oil. You're not gonna get any of the muddy breading in there, and it's gonna be all about the eggplant. So there's just a cup of oil in here. We're looking for 350 degrees. We are heating it over medium high heat, and since it's a shallow amount of oil in the skillet, we wanna tilt it away from us so it pools on one end. Okay, we're well into 350, and that's perfect. So now we're gonna take our eggplant, and I like to work with about three slices at a time, dredge them lightly in the flour, kind of knock off the excess, drop them in the egg. Now you haven't seasoned these eggplant at all yet. This eggplant is sliced so thin that a lot of the water cooks off almost immediately and the sauce is very flavorful and we're gonna add a ton of cheese to this. So there's really no need to add any extra seasoning. And so we're looking for about a minute and a half on each side of the eggplant. We're looking for light golden brown. You can really see it's just like a toasted egg look to it. We want it to just cook through and be tender enough to go into the casserole. 
And as you're cooking and you go further and further through the batch, you want to monitor the temperature and occasionally check it again because even over medium heat, it has a tendency to rise because remember, you're taking a little bit of oil out each time when you put the eggplant on the sheet tray. All right, so we'll finish frying up the eggplant until we make our way through all those slices. All right, Julia, it's time to start assembling our eggplant. And here's perhaps where it gets the most interesting. This is the part that I really fell in love with. We're gonna build individual stacks of eggplant, almost like whole eggplants with cheese and sauce layered in between. Usually when you make eggplant parmesan, you shingle them in addition a single layer or sometimes in two layers like a lasagna. But you're saying we're just gonna make individual stacks. That's right, and this is the way it's served to you at the restaurant. You get a whole ah. rebuilt stack of eggplant. Oh, I like that it's, idea. It's really great. All right, so we're gonna start off by putting one cup of sauce in the bottom of the dish. This is a two ounce ladle, so we'll put four ladles full. And we're just gonna spread that around evenly. And now we're going to put the eggplant in. So we're taking the bigger slices of eggplant because we wanna build up to a point. You know, we wanna have the bigger slices down at the bottom. So then I'm gonna put the second piece of eggplant going top to tail. Ah, yin and yang. One. Exactly, so it fits nice and easy and evenly in there. On top of that, we're going to do a half cup of sauce. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's gonna be so much sauce and cheese in this thing by the time we're done you're not gonna know what happened. <laughs> okay, then the real shocker, that although it's listed as eggplant parmesan on the menu at La Campagna, there's no parmesan in it. Really? It's all pecorino cheese. That is surprising. Apparently Carmela Fragasi grew up going to visit her family in Puglia and all they ever used was <laughs> pecorino. And I gotta say, I'm a convert. I think it's really fantastic stuff and it works really well with this eggplant. Now we're going to keep on layering. So another piece of eggplant, another half cup of sauce, another half cup of pecorino. It's not shy on the cheese. No, that's why we didn't have to season anything. <laughs> All right, so that is our final layer of pecorino. We'll put our last layer of eggplant on top of that. Well, now I see what you mean by putting the smaller pieces on top so you kind of build up to them, almost like a little pyramid. Right, and it's gonna make slicing this and separating your own personal stack a little bit easier. I like the idea of my own <laughs> personal stack. So now we're gonna put the remaining sauce all over top of this. This looks good, Brian. Yeah, and it's so light, it's almost like diet food, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so we're just gonna cover this up with our remaining sauce. All right, now Carmela does not add any more cheese. It's all pecorino, all the way through. I couldn't help but add something that would brown nicely on top. So we have one cup of Fontina cheese here Ooh. that we've shredded, and we're just gonna sprinkle that over top. Well, again, Fontina has more flavor than mozzarella. So you're using pecorino instead of Parmesan, Fontina instead of mozzarella. So you're building in a lot more flavor. This is an alternative eggplant Parmesan. I'm in also known as an eggplant pecorino. <laughs> so we're gonna throw this into a 375 degree oven. I've set the oven rack to the upper middle position, which is about six inches from the broiler element, because we're going to broil this at the end to brown this lovely fontina that we sprinkled on top. It'll take about 30 minutes just to heat the casserole all the way through. It's been about 30 minutes. We could take a look at our eggplant to make sure it's bubbling around the edges and hot throughout. Oh, Brian, that looks good. It's gorgeous, huh? So now we can make it even more gorgeous. We're gonna switch it to broil, and we're gonna brown that cheese that's on top. That'll take about three minutes, but you wanna keep a close eye on it because it can go from beautiful to burnt in a matter of seconds. Good tip. It's been about three minutes, and this casserole is nicely browned. Julia, oh! Do you mind getting that oven door for me? You bet. Okay. That looks oh! Goodness, Brian, that looks amazing. Thanks, so we need to let this rest for about 20 minutes so the cheese will set and it's easily sliceable. Yeah, it looks lava hot. <laughs> it's very hot. <laughs> it's been 20 minutes, the eggplant's rested, and we're finally ready to eat. And I'm ready. All right, so I'm gonna serve you an entire stack here, which is, I think, the way that Carmela would like it. And we could spoon a little bit of sauce yeah. around the, the bottom of the eggplant. How about some for yours? Mmm. Oh, I really love how this is served with a whole stack. Mmm. I know there's a lot of cheese in there, but you really taste the eggplant. This dish is all about the eggplant. It's unlike anything else I've ever had before. Well, and if you think about it, at every stage you added flavor. The tomato sauce, 
had the anchovies and a little bit of red pepper flakes. The cheeses were both pretty flavorful, but yet the eggplant can stand up to it. That's because we didn't overcook it and we didn't bind it with a whole bunch mm. of heavy breading. I don't miss the breadcrumbs at all. Brian, this is amazing. Thank you. We should thank Carmela for the inspiration. So to make this cheesy baked eggplant, start by making a flavorful tomato sauce. Slice the eggplant thinly into long planks, coat with flour and egg, then fry in olive oil. Layer the sauce and eggplant with lots of cheese into a dish, then bake and broil until it's hot and bubbly. From Cook's Country, a great new recipe for eggplant pecorino. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with tastings, testings, and select episodes at our website, cookscountry.com slash TV. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>